Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for being with me today. We've got two events that we need to talk about, and one of them is a horrific murder, and it is important that you see the, the, the entire event to understand just how absolutely evil this particular event is. But well, howdy y'all, Uncle T here. Uh, I'm going to apologize right off the hopper here. Uh, the video quality on this is really bad. It was real bad when I got it, and I tried to fix it up the best I could, but that's what I got. So I apologize right now. Uh, this here is a story of a, another sad story. Uh, you hear too many of these damn stories because of these sick people that are in the world. But anyways, I'm going to leave you all to watch it, and you all judge like as usual. But now I want to... I want to go back. I first want to introduce you to, to the victim. I want you to see the victim. This is Danny Frazier. The reason we're releasing the victim's name, we've all, all already talked to the parents. And this was released when he was reported to Lakeland Police Department as a missing person. Danny is a good person, a great person. Danny is known to be just a super individual and when he didn't show up from work like he was supposed to, his mother became very, very concerned. He works for public supermarkets in the warehousing, and he always shows up like he's supposed to from work to his parents' house, which is where he lives. So when he didn't, what occurred was his mother called and said, hey, look, my son got off work at, you know, just after 2 o'clock in the morning, and he's not home, and that is absolutely unequivocally not like him at all. So he left Publix at 2.08 in the morning, when by 11.40, he did not show up on November the 4th, mom called. Well, the Lakeland Police Department immediately began to work this up and determined that his vehicle was missing as well, so they put it in the computer system. We also saw where someone tried to do a cash app in Bartow, and that was later in the day on the 4th. Now let's fast forward. So he's gone the 4th, he's gone the 5th, and he's gone all day on the 6th. Mom, as she should be, was frantic. This young man is like the perfect child, and he just doesn't do these things. So now let's take you to Friday night. Friday night, Flagler County Sheriff's Office sees the vehicle that the Lakeland Police Department have put in the computer and they make a traffic stop. When they do, Jojo Lobato, who's a Hispanic male, 19, flees from the vehicle. Angel Lobato, who is 18 years of age, his brother, stays in the vehicle. So they contact the Lakeland Police Department and say, hey, we got this vehicle here, and Someone has fled. We later determined it was JoJo, and Angel is the one who stayed. There was not in the Flagler County Sheriff's Office reason to hold him at that time, but they kept the vehicle and let him go. Uh, now, I, I don't understand. Uh, they've got the vehicle being driven by two people that shouldn't be driving it. It's of a person who is a missing person and they don't have grounds for keeping this feller? I, I know I'm not a cop or nothing, but I don't get that. Any y'all police officers, former police officers, Robbie, you want to put in on that? I'd appreciate hearing about it, because I don't know why they would have been let go. Anyways, let's hear the rest of the story. Still, we don't know where our victim is. So now, let's come to from the 6th of November to the 10th of November. Mom of the victim is freaking out because the car's been recovered. It's in these two guys. They're not in custody. Nobody's in custody. Her son's still missing. 
there is a work team that is out looking at some property off Tyndall Camp Road and Helicopter Road. So there, these folks are looking at this property and they come upon a trash pile and there is the remains of a human being that obviously have been covered up in this with with brush and and a piece of a tree and so they say to themselves self this looks like a murder to me upon our arrival we identify Danny as the victim and now we are backtracking because now we're the third agency involved in this when we find the victim we work with the Lakeland Police Department and we find out that these two folks are involved in the event. We spend a period of time tying stuff together, but we can't find them. They're in the wind. So we get information. We get information that they are at the advanced auto parts in Lake Wells in another vehicle that they've borrowed. The Lake Wells Police Department, who's on our frequency and our Southeast District deputies all rush to the scene, and Lake Wells Police Officers and our deputies take these two guys into custody. We bring them to the office, and I'm gonna give you the short version of all of this. They confessed, and their confession is absolutely horrific. Their confession was how proud that they were. You see, when we arrested them, JoJo had short hair like in this, but that night JoJo had long hair and dreadlocks. Well, guess what? He returned to the shaved head look. And he was putting this online on social media, M1 on me. We're going to do the race till there ain't no wheels like whatever this group is, Tay, Tay K, the, this rap group, Tay K, for real, for real. Well, let me tell you something, JoJo. You might have thought you were in a race, but your wheels are all four flat, and you're locked up in the county jail. So you were racing, and you hit a wall, and it was called the Polk County Sheriff's Office. And the only thing you're going to be doing now is racing for your turn in the showers. They both gave us confessions such as this. They had planned this murder for about three weeks. And so it was set up that JoJo was going to meet our victim to have sex. The victim picked him up in downtown Central Park in Winter Haven in the city. And he drove him around to Lake Howard, which is not far away. Well, who's hanging out in the bushes, hidden? Angel, the brother is. So Angel's hiding by a parking lot on Lake Howard with a baseball bat. JoJo has a knife. They've schemed this plan out, okay, once you get him here, then you pretend to distract him and stab him. And he did. And a fight ensued. And our victim, Danny, was fighting for his life. And in the process of fighting, and in the process of JoJo now, who stabbed him and the knife broke. The next thing you know, they finally get the door open. Angel has to knock the window out of the door because the door's locked. Angel starts hitting him in the head with a baseball bat. Uh, this here press conference was just a few days ago. Uh, I'm not sure that, you know, you want to be talking about this kind of stuff and the detail he is when you know the victim is just you know so recent 
His family and mother must be beside themselves. I just can't even believe how they'd be feeling right now. Now they're downtown Winter Haven where the murder actually occurred. Then they go, well, we got to do something with him. And that's when they drove him probably 25 or 30 minutes out into the countryside where they didn't just put him out on the side of the road, but they hit him intentionally. And quite frankly, folks, we would still not know where Danny was today had it not been for those folks surveying that property. When we interviewed them, they were pure evil in the flesh. They bragged about it. They talked about how, you know, they'd have street cred. They'd have their stripes. They'd be respected on the streets because they'd done this murder. Well, what they did was they, they murdered they murdered a really nice young man. Well, there you go, my friends. I, I'm just going to leave it at that. Uh, there's a lot more of that press conference, you know, that he had. I, I don't think it's any information that anybody really wants to see. Uh, we know they're scumbags and they're dirty, evil people, and these gangs are all psychotics. But, anyways, there's your society for you. Everybody gets a trophy. Enough pontificating. Y'all have a blessed day. You take care of yourself. Take care of each other. And we'll see you real soon. Bye for now.